Now that we took a little bit of a break, ate some good Texas brisket. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, yeah, some over. Quite welcome. <laughs> Let me ask the ridiculous question. At, at the core of uh, the idea of Bitcoin is this guy or this entity named Satoshi Nakamoto. So the ridiculous question is, who is Satoshi Nakamoto? And first of all, is it you? <laughs> it's not me. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and is this an interesting question? Or is it just something about our human nature that wants to, that always uh, tends towards mystery? Well, as we've touched on a bit today, you know, mythology, in my opinion, is something that is intrinsic to how we see the world in a lot of ways. I can tell it's kind of the structure by which we build these useful fictions. And so, in that way, you could just say that Satoshi is the godhead of Bitcoin, effectively. And I think a compelling argument could be made that his disappearance is what really solidifies Bitcoin's decentralization. Because if there were one individual to personally vilify or denigrate or attack, um, you know, to disparage or question the motives of, um, you know, if he's out, <coughs> out in the Hollywood Hills partying, everyone knows he's got a million Bitcoin, you know, it would just kind of tarnish the entire project in a lot of way. But the fact that on that theme, something for nothing, this guy actually gave humanity something for nothing. And it appears that he didn't profit in any way. He, she, or they. Um, I actually heard recently that he identified as a he in some of his communications. So it sounds like it is a he. Um, so <laughs> Like his communications being like studied, like almost like exactly as if he is a religious. Uh, That's right. Like a prophet. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating to imagine that he's still alive and living in this world. Mm -hmm. And it's even more fascinating to imagine that he's perhaps participating in the Bitcoin community. Because, I mean, that's, that takes a special human being to out of principle do that to do uh to to remain anonymous that's very much the george washington yeah i always wonder like how many people are like that there's a cliche that like absolute power corrupts absolutely like power corrupts mm. but it seems like the progress of humanity depends on the people whom power doesn't corrupt mm. interesting and, and it's enough to have just a small selection of those yeah and e even if most of us are too weak we give in to power if given ch yeah. the chance. All it takes is a few. That's f I've never thought of it like that, but Marcus Aurelius immediately came to mind. Yeah, you know the guy that he had the keys to the kingdom, and he apparently adhered to the Stoic virtues until the end. Um, but yeah, I agree with Satoshi. The other thing that's interesting is he would be by far the most wealthy person in the world mm -hmm. on a liquid asset basis because he has a million bitcoin which is 60 billion liquid net worth at current prices so if he is still alive and just operating in the world he is daily and moment to moment resisting massive incentives to go and just be the richest guy in the world <laughs> He's the ultimate hodler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's, I mean, it's uh, turning down not just financial success, but also fame. Mm -hmm. I mean, fame is another drug. It's mm -hmm. a kind of power, but it's in itself is also a drug, especially in this modern society, mm -hmm. in this attention. And he would have both. He would have both. Yeah. It's fun to imagine who, who it could be. It's fascinating if it's somebody like you or somebody like Elon or somebody like that. That's fascinating to think about. Yeah, I think Elon would be hilarious if he came yeah, out yeah. and he was Satoshi and be like, hey guys, I know I'm already the richest guy in the world, but <laughs> I gotta go ahead and double my lead here. 